<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classical Revolution here on IDAGIO. My name is Rachel Fenlon, and this is my weekly series, chatting with guests who are really doing cool stuff outside the box in classical music, pushing boundaries, and I'm chatting with them about what inspires them, what fuels that thinking and that, uh, that curiosity. Today, I am joined by Sergei Malov. Sergei is considered as versatile as he is virtuoso. He plays the violin, the viola, the Baroque violin, and the cello da spalla. He's performed as a soloist with orchestras like the BBC London Orchestra, the London Philharmonic Orchestra, the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra, the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra. His repertoire ranges from J.S. Bach to romantic, classical concerti, to contemporary music and improvisation. Um, he has recorded six solo albums. You can find his artist profile here on iDagio. Um, and his most recent album is a wonderful expedition into the J.S. Bach cello suites played on the Cello da Spalla. It's really beautiful. I definitely recommend checking it out. But in the meantime, I'm really thrilled to have him on the show today. Please welcome Sergei Malov. It's okay. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. It's very nice to have you. A time where we have a little bit more free time than we would wish, but I appreciate it. So why not you know, it get together and talk about music? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Sergey, I'd love to just begin the, the show by by hearing a little bit about your introduction to music, um, whether there were any specific musical moments which led you on your on your musical journey, it's it's hard to say. Well, and still now, I since I could not define a very central direction where where my music or whatever my action interaction with music is going was strange, it was maybe rather sporty. So I, when I really became totally passionate about music, I could rephrase it and it felt like I was passionate about getting good at my instrument. At the time it was only the violin. And then after probably doing some steps in that direction, also I had a very clever teacher. It's like somebody like Rainer Schmidt, a super inspiring violinist from Hagen Quartet, told me, well, be careful, it could be too late. If you only do this sporty thing, you will then miss becoming a good musician. So this is what I'm trying to give all my students on as a, actually the main goal to follow. And basically all the, all the technical problems are getting solved much easier if you have a clear vision what the musical content you are after, actually. So that's why that's why it's also yeah, that's why my yeah musical way is so difficult because I couldn't I couldn't say what I would stay with. So I would really have a trouble taking one particular piece to an uh, to a deserted island this famous question one is being asked and i'm yeah i'm trying to gather so much in myself that i can recreate or if you wish improvise on top or on on behalf of on, on behalf of everyone so, and also playing other composers uh, I don't know, to try to kind of communicate with them and not only reproduce something that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, because if you understand someone, you can still kind of chat and, and exchange. And I, mm -hmm. well, I dare to sort of to try to exchange <laughs> with the composers, even though they're dead many years ago. But I guess I now derived and not really answering your first question. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I, I think, what we'd love to hear is also, is also that, I mean, especially for someone who's multi-instrumental like you, uh, where did you begin? Like, which instrument did you begin with? How old were you? Yeah, uh, by, uh, my both parents are musicians. My father is a pianist. My mom was a violinist. So it's clear that I was given a violin mm -hmm. in the hands. So yeah, I happen also to, well, in my family, Mikhail Koppelmann, the 
famous primarios of the Borodin Quartet of their, in their golden years, is my uncle. So yeah, well, I remember the few concerts in Leningrad still, and that one that gave a huge inspiration. Indeed, I did practice and, and performed a string quartet for a few years. It was a very rich, interesting uh, kind of experience. <laughs> But yeah, violin, violin was my instrument and still luckily is. Uh, and the piano is getting slowly, well, the keyboard instruments are getting slowly but surely in my life through clavichord. Mm. But there's probably like an extra chapter <laughs> and bearing some things because, because one cannot listen for a very long time for just one instrument, particularly for the violin. And as a kind of exchanging things, and also Bach wrote so many more and so many greater things for keyboard instruments than he did for solo violin or cello, that I just can't stop exploring, doesn't matter what sort of instrument it is. <laughs> I love that mentality. I think it's, I mean, that was definitely gonna be one of my questions for you in general was like, um, keeping that openness to creativity um i i would i would venture to say as a classical musician isn't easy especially when you start to think about sort of the like, commercialization of what we do and so it definitely be very difficult curious. part <laughs> yeah so I, I mean how do you approach that that topic in terms of like keep taking risks and keep nourishing no. your creativity i'm trying to make this my special uh, mark when I entered the, I don't know, the IRD competition in Viola, and then next year I reached the finals, and next year I won the Tokyo Viola competition, uh, I was sort of entering totally uh, like foreign terrain and uh, yeah, basically taking violists' bread. And, but I was not one second thinking on, on kind of abandoning the violin. Was, clearly that way and I inspired I asked a great friend to compose a concerto for violin and viola with one single soloist then the multi-track recordings began mm -hmm. and ended till now with Mendelssohn octet which I'm really proud of this production it was kind of out of out of a blue out of like a negative experience within the octet I thought, well, I can do that better. Uh, so, uh, and of course, yeah, you miss, you miss the chamber music part of it, but it's yeah. so much fun to kind of, well, to let the instruments speak uh, with or against each other. And also this, yeah, only very few actors could perform double roles uh, kind of, mm, well, convincingly. And you can, well, you can guess that it's a good actor if, if he can divide himself in different roles. And that's the challenge. But also, look, your, you know, these instruments I play, they are so similar and, and there's nothing easier to, to take a few of them to, to enrich your possibilities, to enrich your repertoire. This is just very natural for me. Commercialization, mm -hmm. Uh, that's how this is how the world sticks obviously we like someone very narrowly specialized it's it's very clear but but how about you know creating your own niche creating your own profile doing that well this is what this is what <laughs> i'm aiming for it takes more time so i definitely you know, i'm on the way <laughs> i hope I'll never arrive. Yeah, I love there that. Too many yeah. this yeah. examples where you reach the top with 16 or 20, and most of the destinies and kind of artistic ways of these guys is super difficult. Yeah. Very, very few are able to continue somewhere. So I'm, I'm rather grateful and lucky to yeah. be somewhere in the middle of life and of the musical way. Exactly, and, and still in a place, 
where you're, you know, you're really at the top of what you do, but well, you're able to you be searching. Found me. <laughs> you found me today for <laughs> no, the interview. So. <laughs> it's, this, it's this, it's this mentality that you're searching for something, and and I like so much what you said earlier about about interpretation being a communication and a dialogue. Um, yeah, I think that's that that's it's really fantastic. Um, as an interpreter, I'm I'm also curious what your approach is in that do you, how, yeah, how much do you feel you stay really true to the music and try and find exactly what the composer is, is composing and, and writing and wanting? And how much do you actually make your own decisions and totally diverge from it? What, what's that balance like for you? Mm, a very good, very good question. It, but it's it actually not a difficult one for me because mm -hmm. once, well, compared with the text, uh, it's so easy. I mean, you just see this combination of words, and they uh, they mean something. They mean something. Maybe even like objectively, they mean some something. But obviously, the more deep the text is, the more meanings or the more interpretations and sorts of way, ways of understanding it there are. Same is for the music. So if you understood it right it should mean something and and sometimes it's basically doesn't matter if you're right or wrong understanding it but they I, either you do understand it and then they still can be like whatever how many versions of the right interpretation of it <laughs> yeah. or you don't and then it's absolutely totally wrong right uh, and you, you you can see well exactly just being with our instruments with a piano violin we are it's so difficult uh, so that somebody playing in tune or more or less rhythmically is already like considered as a big virtuoso and since also the public the greater public doesn't have any access to like basic musical education which is a total shame as mm. if we couldn't read all right we still could I mean anyway it's anything with pictures we could live without nowadays absolutely but it's just such a shame we, we would miss so many layers of of incredible whatever spiritual life if you wish with the music is for me totally the same it's it's well it's too banal example but again it's always it's always much easier to, um, to understand. Why should it be different? That's what I'm trying to do. So I think, I imagine, I hope that the better I understand this music, since there must be a transporter, since no one can enjoy the music by just reading it, or very few people could do. So there must be a medium, if you wish. Mm -hmm. And the better I understand it, the more pleasure of kind of getting it will uh, will be taken over given over to given over to the public so the sheer fact that i mean something by that or i understand what he composer means by that makes the performance a valuable one mm -hmm. and not the amount of rhythmically or in tune played no yeah. no that's wonderful i like it, it's it's it it's simple. It's a simple analogy, but it's so true. It's you're the, the serving medium, and the more information you have, the more information everyone else will get. And it's definitely something we've been talking about on the show with with previous guests. Is also just this this subject of education with listeners and the lack thereof, and how problematic that is. Um, you're so you're a teacher as well. You're a professor yes. in Zurich. In Zurich. What's Thank that, you know, what, what has that, how has that shifted your kind of, yeah, master? It's just enriched yeah. the, the whole thing. My, well, obviously my life got a little bit less stressed than before it was just going from one gig to another. And they, <laughs> when they were not, uh, then it was a little bit narrow and unsecure and not nice. But, but like this, and it's also, well, it, yeah, I'm again very afraid to kind of, 
to say super banal things like you're hearing you learn by teaching blah 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 but unfortunately it's true yeah and yeah well the repertoire of violin is very wide but unfortunately the students play only a very very narrow part of it so i have to invent uh, some yeah new explanations for the things again and again and for myself as a player it's of course very useful because i would never put it in words but once put in words it's good it's it has a little bit of new aspects if you wish uh and yeah well this is a set, yeah accompanying somebody for like a little bit longer way for two or three years it's a very cool experience very very mm -hmm. nice now it's fourth year and basically it's almost kind of a second generation of my students came now that are much much better than the first was and yeah i'm very happy it's a fantastic building it's an amazing collective of friends and colleagues most of them in my age so meaning young <laughs> and it's also very nice that i'm not not living there i'm coming twice a month and the people would have the experience the the, the responsibility to sort of prepare and know that i'm not all the time there for them there <laughs> and it's still i mean they are grown-ups it's a university so it's a very 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 lucky situation mm. for me. yeah no that's it sounds very um, rewarding yeah. um so <laughs> something i'd love for you to talk a little bit about and um to tell uh, our audience about is um is about the introduction of this the reintroduction that you're responsible for um of this instrument the cello La cello da sala. Yeah, can you just talk? I mean, tell us about the instrument and also what gave you the first sort of imagination to kind of bring and bring this back into the concert halls? Yeah, this. that's a very, very cool. It, first, it was kind of, yeah, flying in my hand and also my, in my dreams how to, how to bring this lightness of the Bach's cello suites that I thought I've been reaching on the viola. I've played almost all of them, but five of them on, on the viola before. And it was so clearly much more dancing and, and light, obviously one octave lighter mm -hmm. than the no. But how could you combine that? And since one day, somebody showed me a video clip that exactly was basically depicting my ideal dream of it. So there is a small cello posed in this kind of very baroquish way on your shoulder and the violinist, as studied violinist, can play all this stuff. And, and obviously it's a smaller sound, a smaller corpus, but also it's much more you know, kind of virtuoso, it's lighter. <laughs> And the mm -hmm. sound of it fits just perfectly this six incredible pieces by Bach. And then after, of course, it looks, there is Vivaldi Sonadas, Concerti, Bach's son, Carl Philipp Emanuel, wrote three amazing cello concerti. He must have known of this instrument, etc., cetera, et cetera. So uh, I was very happy that there is this historical, music historical background that rather profoundly and convincingly proved that there have been this instrument. There are a few historical copies, but was not very important for me. Still, I was searching for what can I do with this today? <laughs> How can we, well, of course, obviously, um, kind of seen and, and inspired by how was it played back then? And not only played, but rather constructed and com composed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to do the best out of it today, because we have different holes. So we maybe need other strings than just gut strings for this very delicately sounding instrument. So I got a few string makers doing their incredible job. And very recently, another colleague just invented this thing. So there's a bridge and in this bridge, there's a pickup 
uh -huh. built in. So if I put, if I put here, if I put a little um, receiver or kind of transmitter that brings that sound, or I put it through a little machine that doesn't make it so uh, pick up, pick up -y, the sound, right. so I can adjust the loudness or whatever the uh, oh. reverb of the instrument for the necessities of the whole. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. That's the newest development of it, and yeah, they they've been a lot, a lot of them. So there are five strings, and so it makes it even more like virtuoso and, and 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 easy to play than normal cello because it's tuned in C, G, D, A, and E. Another fifth on the top. So, no, and there's a belt that I, that I just very easily put it almost as a guitar. And the bow was also made especially into my hand. It's exactly for the right weight. And somehow, yeah, it, it's, it's very cool wow. that so many things are custom made yeah. for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I was very lucky then, then this Bach Society came with the proposal to record the sixth cello suite in this gas this thing, gas fabric in Amsterdam. So it's in a few days, there will be my first million of views. I have no <laughs> doubt about it. It's quite, quite incredible how this channel is going all of Bach. I absolutely recommend that. Uh, it's so, yeah, that, that also, that was not in the very beginning, but still gave a lot of, a lot of attention mm. for the instrument and, and for me, but like, there's a whole society or kind of a little Facebook, little, not very little Facebook group only for makers of this instrument. Oh, wow. Okay. So there may be a dozen of makers already and, and a lot of interest. For that, they they are getting more and more brave people among mm -hmm. the violinists and violists, mm -hmm. ready and still eager to to mm -hmm. to try it out, because it it's takes some money and, uh, and and all the research. And for me, it was two. They were two most important things: whether I can learn it quickly. So yes, I could. <laughs> I the sixth week I played in a few weeks after I got the instrument. And the second, even more important, if I could bring it in the airplane without an extra ticket. And this and? was also a yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 a violin for all the airlines. And for Russian custom is a guitar. Okay. Which also makes much less uh, much less complications. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's no, it's very exciting. I mean, it's sort of like watching the evolution of, a, of an instrument. Yeah. And, being, and being a part of that because it's because you're bringing it you're the person bringing it back yeah right. yeah it was not at all a kind of a, a clever yep. career step but it came yeah. absolutely sp spontaneously <laughs> out of out of a sincere passion for music yeah. I'm very happy that i could use it for my profession i think i could do much much more com commercialization out of it but and very happy that well finally the the other CD with it goes rather well. The coolest thing that's the only first album that incorporates the whole six cello suites in one single CD. Uh -huh. Never before it was done. Wow! But I wonder if there would be one, one person who ever listened to that double CD, even one of them. It's well. I'm sorry. Of course. It must be, well, for some reason of either background music or sleep away music, <laughs> but, but not in a way of, of thrilling story. Because mm -hmm. when it was played for the first time and the most of the music back then was played for the first and maybe only time, you would need the repeats to sort of, aha, how interesting, because you would also follow what's mm -hmm. happening because you would as a listener would be very kind of very well trained in harmonics and in on some instrument for sure and you would kind of follow that re 
much more actively than nowadays we we are able to do mm -hmm. and therefore aha okay well it's super interesting can i hear that again <laughs> right <laughs> and, and also of course well the other aspect that the pieces became longer but nowadays of, of some pieces we know them so well almost by heart we hear it for the millionth time why do we need another repeat yeah. well that's just of course a polemic question and sometimes yeah if i need a longer piece why not repeating why not improvising why not embellishing all the things are open yeah no exactly i think um i think it's also a good point that to take it to remember that we have all heard these pieces now so many times <laughs> you know we can't we can't not we can't deny that as as part of the interpretation so no i oh, like it yeah. Um, yeah which i i sometimes i'm guilty of with all my you know strophic schubert songs but <laughs> these are the repeats but there well schubert is maybe the most minimalistic of the classical composers right? oh yeah i like that yes <laughs> <laughs> um i'm curious yeah, I, I'm, um, how, how important is contemporary music for you? And have you commissioned composers in general? And do you think about commissioning composers for this instrument? No, yeah, this question has been asked a few times already. So the, my greatest and maybe only commission was this concerto for violin and viola. Okay. And I premiered next year after my Tokyo competition. It's a chacon, a huge, like 20 minutes chacon, uh, based on the anthem of my football team in St. Petersburg. It's just a wonderful song composed by Vasily Solovyov Sidoy, a friend of Shostakovich, who made a kind of a song for Leningrad and then later it became an anthem of Zenit St. Petersburg, my football club. So I thought, well, why not? Do, be taking that as a main theme since it's a my concerto and he also incorporated Hungarian sort of recitative moments because my mom in, was born in uh, in the Hungarian part of Ukraine mm -hmm. and she raised she was raised three lingually so I got the Hungarian part uh, from her uh, and and this was also kind of an inspiration for him. Christoph Ern Fellner is called the composer. It's a great friend and chamber music partner. And in, indeed, a fantastic composer. But for the cello, I truly, I have to confess, I'm somehow, I'm being a little bit like jealous or something. I, I think it's such a great instrument for improvisations. And this is probably, I'm still waiting kind of a, like a, a non, not existent or maybe existing, but not came out composer in me is still sitting and maybe waiting to kind of to, to say something through the instrument. And it would just, you know, if I would just give this to someone else. Somehow, particularly with this instrument, I feel I feel this strange thing. I don't know. It's a little bit interesting. I'm, I'm surprised myself now about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, perhaps it's perhaps it's also. I'm just venturing a guess, but perhaps it's also that you want to be the first, perhaps, person to write something, and then. <laughs> yeah, that that's a very cool point. Yeah, I don't indeed. know. That, I'm indeed. just thinking of myself, but. Uh... Well, for till now, uh, yeah. I, well, I pushed the borders until publicly already until uh, Haydn Concerto. But there is a little uh, little trace of Schumann Taylor Concerto on Instagram. But I, indeed, I think it could work. It's so classically done. It, it so doesn't require any fat cello sound. I mean, the cello concerto by Schumann. And uh, if I find a nice pickup amplification solution, that actually every cello would need <laughs> playing with <laughs> playing this piece with orchestra. Right. And we so wish when we hear maybe the best interpreter of this piece, Mr. Isolis, playing <laughs> it, we so wish to hear more when we hear it live. I was lucky to, to some of bits I could hear. Mm. 
uh, but obviously he's, he's playing with gut strings and not all the orchestras are able to, to, be, to be gentle enough to not cover him so much for, and yeah, he's playing one of the probably certainly most beautiful strands as an instrument. So, and this, you know, actually every new piece played by this instrument becomes kind of a premiere. Right, right. Well, I think I saw a clip on YouTube of the Arpeggione Sonata. Is that? That's it. Yeah. That was really cool. Very proud of. Yeah, yeah. That was the first, the kind of the act. It's it's especially kind of house, house <laughs> atmosphere that fits very well. I think the the character of the piece. And yeah, well, if all these years I thought it's too difficult for for Spala and somehow it wouldn't fit. I love it on viola. But then once I tried it out, it worked. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. There's also the Stentchen as a kind of as an encore related video. Also, that's where I do the first strophe on violin and then switch to mm. violoncello. Right. Kind of making. Um, yeah, and I think seeing you also seeing you work with loops, it made me definitely wonder, um, especially about the contemporary music component, just because there are so many um, electronic contemporary composers indeed, working with indeed. that. And I thought, oh, it could be very cool. Yeah, well, for me, it turns, of course, where it used the most in the rather, well, popular <laughs> music, where the rhythm is dominating much more mm -hmm. the music than it does, for example, in the classical music. That's why classical right. music have such a poor rhythm feeling, including. <laughs> yeah. Hey, talk for yourself. Uh, <laughs> <Just> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah. But no, no, no. It's, uh, there's it's, a reason of it because we just deal with it so much less, and the freedom and the rubato is is being so important. When basically, yeah, the greatest freedom in jazz or with the you get with the most strict bass and 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 drums, and all this cool feeling, like the more the more kind of the more unfree you are, the more freedom you can express this yeah. sort of artistic, artistic way. And well, all the loop machines and all the electric instruments are basically for that reason. Okay, okay. So different that, sound, but also different music. You right. Know, music for the sound for music or music for the sound. Yeah, yeah. It certainly made me think I mean, it, it made me think about like, I don't know, hearing Steve Reich on it or something. I mean, I don't know why, but no, anything possible, I suppose. Could be, could be. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's being done. Well, this phrase, yeah, violent phrase. Oh, yeah. It's an it's an incredible piece, it gets totally aggressive. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought of playing it somehow. I first had to get over my aggression about this piece and I'm really well. a little bit scared. <laughs> Is it something I will... <laughs> I see, I see. I would, I would kind of present to the people paying their money for entrance oh. tickets. Well, we all, we all have our different tastes, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I'm, I'm always like love to ask my guests on, the, on this uh, show is um, how political you feel as an artist. And um, yeah, whether you feel like music itself can be political, um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's very, it's a very cool question. Um, I live in a country where I am not able to vote, and I am coming from the country where definitely my vote would not count, <laughs> and uh, nobody's vote is counted. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of books and, and essays and opinions written uh, and expressed about it, how relevant and how important music, how can music influence politics? I mean, of course, my favorite is the dedication to Napoleon of the Beethoven's Eroica and then taking it off because, well, the guy went for a very nice idea and then turned around and said, no, 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 I'm actually 
la république c'est moi and basically turned the whole thing around but was it what it, beethoven's composition somehow didn't change that aspect of the history but it probably massively influenced the whole musical history that is going parallel way uh, look the political situation yeah in in in, in my country I, It's somehow I don't know how how I could feel influenced by that. I get more concerts when I yeah through a very few friends who are influenced there and who are I don't say they are collaborating with that terrible power, yeah. But they are they are otherwise and and also yeah there are very few people dominating the market and you would have to kind of to to be friends with them and it's a pity that I that I can't or I don't want <laughs> that and in this case you yeah, know I'm a little bit influenced and definitely my possibilities are very limited for example for the wish of playing more in my own country mm. but it's maybe I'm just imagining that myself and and look also how important is getting nowadays in well in germany this thing of are you guys really not in need of any music and performance of the music is it your is are you serious but just just closing everything just not letting us play for those who would maybe need it so it's very it's very dangerous to well to tell it in any public yeah. public space in you are kind of you are getting a covid descendant whatever i'm afraid i could be one in rather that uh, direction because you know recently uh, just before the shows i played the symphony espanol in malaga and there was a total mask terror even though i would i would have a lot of space to the next person next to me and playing with a mask mm -hmm. was just absolutely impossible for me Mm. and uh, yeah well look who are we to decide the politics said so <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe not and then, then any music making would would make uh, much little sense with it but certainly it's all what well, influencing us and all the other people and branches very powerfully but it is kind of a part of a big political game that will well this game or set of this game will be over and since if we were a, well if we arrived somewhere at some amount of concerts and con orchestras and concerts halls more or less being filled rather frequently than not we will certainly arrive at that point very soon and we will just forget what is happening now and continue so i would wish just we would, would that well as many of us as possible could use could have the means and the energy and whatever power to well to use this time out if you wish mm -hmm. to create to i don't know to think about about what about what they do or create something they wanted and never had time for well this is what I, what I was telling to myself at least and at, yeah. at this point rather than just being terrified of well being thrown out of your of the new, new emptying new calendar <laughs> yeah 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 you know, yeah we'll feel it with with some with some with some different stuff with it just it, if possible Yeah, no, I think that's really great. Um, using it as a chance to sort of cultivate something. As, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's, it, it can sound very cynical for those who, who don't have the opportunity for that. Yeah. Um, and and when, the, when the existence is being threatened, well then, yeah. But then sometimes they are different creative solutions or yeah. artistic expressions are being invented and i'm sure they have yeah exactly and i mean just to sort of to close you you have actually worked on quite a lot of projects during this time right i have 
because yeah. I, I think you were telling me a little bit earlier today, just um, yeah. when we met on the phone, <laughs> um, exactly. you, you no, mentioned exactly. that you've been using the time and working on some video projects, also the solo, the Bach solo violin that's, sonata and partitas. And that's it. Yeah, I'm very happy that the CD with the cello suites is, is being appreciated, is being even like, yeah, bought, so they, they want to reprint another whatever some copies uh, but I also do enjoy music with the picture with a well-done picture with it more than just the just the audio and I thought uh, it would be nice to to capture well what, what I can do alone they are at least six Bach cello suites and six violin sonatas and partitas I call the project 300 years of solitude because 100 Years of Solitude, the Marcus is my favorite book. And since 300 years, uh, it's 1720 marked in the manuscript where Bach lost his first wife unexpectedly, Maria Barbara, and dedicated the whole cycle to her. So it's, it's being a big, big date for, for me mm. as a violinist uh, with, with these pieces. So I want to celebrate this. Year. I will probably be a little bit late, but 301 year of solitude is as as valuable for me as as just the 300. And uh, yeah, we will be. I'm just searching in, in for ways how I can do it the most powerful and the most effective way. Maybe more more modern with just single movements of different pieces that then will uh, put well be able to put together as a puzzle mm. so there are a lot of movements obviously just 36 for the cello suites and at least as many for the violin so i've done a, a very big job very big work for for that and the first yeah the first of these projects was the arpeggione now oh, it's online like this very cool. Looking forward well, I'm, to I'm looking be. forward to hearing it. And um, thank you so much for, for making time today and, and just sharing a little bit about, about your music. Thank you. My pleasure, Rachel. So it's wishing you all fun. the best with your however many more months of solitude. Hopefully not too many. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Solitude, luckily. Oh, yeah, with that's a right. daughter. That's right. New family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, thank cool. you so much. Welcome, take my pleasure. Care, take good care in Berlin. And thank you to everyone for tuning in um, today. And definitely do check out Sergei's discography, which is linked in this episode. Okay. Bye, everyone. And